Good morning, everyone. So happy you could join us for the 19th annual virtual Paul and Jean Sullivan breakfast. I'm sure they would be so happy for us to carry on this tradition of bringing Democratic candidates for office together, even during a pandemic. These have been challenging times, but the candidates have managed to get their messages out to us, the voter. Please grab your coffee and a comfortable seat and join us and enjoy the speeches from our Democratic candidates. Please remember to get out and vote on September 1st. On behalf of the family of Jean and Paul Sullivan, our thoughts and prayers are focused on those families that have been affected medically, economically, and emotionally by the COVID-19 pandemic, and those that are on the front lines fighting this virus in the fight for racial equality. Although these last seven months have been without a doubt unprecedented times, we have shown time and time again that our strength comes when we continue to stand together as a community. As we mark the 19th year of the Memorial Breakfast, named for Jean Sullivan and then renamed in 2018, the Jean and Paul Sullivan Memorial Breakfast, we remember two people who dedicated their lives to vigorously defining our democratic values, defending our dem democratic values, the working class and the little guy. They were proud to be part of the Democratic Party and to call the city of Brockton home for over 50 years. This year, under the shadow of COVID-19, the working class and the little guy are known as essential workers and are more than ever at risk of economic stress. Because of that and the injustices this country is facing, we need to recognize that our democratic values require us to stand together and support and promote those individuals. Today, I imagine how Jean and Paul would work to raise up those who would fight for our democratic ideals. And it will continue to help make the lives of the people of this country better. The Democratic Party has always been the party of people. They would be especially proud of how the young people in this country have taken on the responsibility of not only raising awareness, but affecting change. And that is an excerpt from the letter from Paula Bozin's and daughter to Jean and Paul Sullivan. At this time, I would like to say the Pledge of Allegiance. Jimmy Carrera was scheduled, but he is not feeling well. So um, I am going to grab my little flag that I have at home. And I hope you can join us in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic. For which to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. With liberty. And with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At this time, I would like to bring in Ward 4 City Councilor and Attorney Susan Nicastro to do our blessing. Hang on one second. We are going to bring uh, Susan in. Hang on one second. All right. Okay, I'm here. Thank Susan, you. you are in. Yes. Hang on one second. Thank you. Let's make sure okay. that your screen is. We're going to spotlight your video. You All have right, to make sure they're ready for me. Go ahead. Okay, good morning. As I introduce our prayer for today's virtual Jean and Paul Sullivan Memorial Breakfast, I stand in the beautiful shoes of two amazing Brockton Democratic City Committee members, 
Joan Madden, and Eleanor Whitworth, who led our prayer in the recent past. Interesting times of change require a thoughtful special prayer reflecting our heart's true desires. And so we offer a video of this fine prayer, which closed our recent Democratic National Convention. Take it away, Greg. This will undoubtedly be one of the most contested elections in recent history with all of the important issues facing us, all of the events and tragedies that have taken place over the last few months. I really believe in asking God for help. I mean, I believe in petitionary prayer. So my prayer at the convention was for God to open our hearts to those who are most in need. The prayer that I wrote is not Democrat or Republican, it's Catholic. It's about the sanctity of all human life and the need for us to welcome all people. So it's not partisan, it's religious. Hi, I'm Father Jim Martin. Let us pray. Loving God, help us open our hearts to those most in need. The unemployed parent worried about feeding his or her children. The woman who is underpaid, harassed, or abused. The black man or woman who fears for their lives. The immigrant at the border longing for safety. The homeless person looking for a meal. The LGBT teen who is bullied. The unborn child in the womb. The inmate on death row. Help us to be a nation where every life is sacred, all people are loved, and all are welcome. Amen. All right. So next on the agenda here um, is going to be is the Brockton area NAACP president Phyllis Ellis. Great. So let me just grab Phyllis here. Out of... Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, because I can't hear anything. All right. So uh, Phyllis is just getting put into the panel here, and then we are going to get started once she's in. All right. There you go. So Phyllis, you are in. We're going to ask to start video. We're going to unmute you. And you should, you can get started, Phyllis. Good morning. Thank you for inviting me as a panelist for the 19th annual Sullivan Breakfast. I am pleased to be here. Why is voting important? Participation in elections is one of the key freedoms of American life. No matter what you believe or whom you support, it is important to exercise your rights. Some of the reasons why you should vote, elections have consequences. Not voting is giving up your voice. Voting is an opportunity for change. The community depends on you. Voting is your civic duty. Too many people take it for granted. Brockton has a population of close to 100,000 people. Yet as of 2019, there are only 52,705 registered voters. Voter turnout is usually very low in primaries with a little increase in the general election. There should not be any unregistered voters in Brockton. All registered voters should vote on September 1st and November 3rd, and there should never be a low turnout to vote. Make your voices heard and vote. On a personal level, I find it unacceptable for people who can vote don't. As a black woman, I know the sacrifices that were made in order for me to vote. People lost their lives. People were beaten just to demand that key freedom of American life. So when people do not vote, to me, it's like a slap in the face. For me to vote. It is a disservice to the peop people. It is a disservice to, to the 500 nonviolent people who marched in March of 1965 from Selma. Those who were fighting for their constitutional rights. They're fighting for people like me. I am able, that was 1965, 
It is 2020, and both directions find a way to deny people like me my voting rights. So I exercise my right to vote. For those unresident voters, the right to have the right to name association for their hands and a couple of people, it's hosting a voter registration day today at 4 o'clock in the Los Angeles. Will we speak to the talking about the court of the school? It will be a movie, a driving movie. I hope you will join us. Voting is power. If you do not vote, you give that power to someone else to make a decision for you. Don't let that happen. Please vote. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Phyllis. Um, and uh, next up here, we have um, Brockton Mayor. Uh, Bob Sullivan is going to be going to be speaking, so I'm just going to bring his video up. There you are, Mayor. You are on. You can uh, you can go ahead and get get started here. Great. First of all, I want to uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. This is the new normal with Zoom, uh, but I want to just say good morning to Democrats. Uh, that's what this breakfast is about. I mean, Gene and, and Red Sullivan were uh, really the examples of what the Democratic ideals are. And I want to thank Deb Garland for her leadership. I want to thank uh, the city committee uh, officers and the, of course, the ward, uh, the ward representations. We're all in this together. We're all good Democrats. I want to also thank the Stadinsky family for the years of public service and dedication to the city of Brockton. But, uh, you know, let's start off. Uh, I loved the prayers of Father Martin, but I think it would be um, appropriate. Let's take a moment of silence for Brocktonian uh, Sergeant Elder Fernandez uh, that recently passed away. May he rest in peace and our thoughts and family are with Elder and of course the Fernandes family. Um, so one thing that I wanted to just let you know, the county treasurer Tom O'Brien texted me just a little while ago. Unfortunately, he has a family commitment and he can't join us. Uh, but I'm so excited to be here today as a Democrat and as a lifelong Brocktonian. I wanna first of all, congratulate all the candidates that are seeking office or seeking reelection right now. Uh, the whole basis of the Democratic party is we support our specific candidate. And we work diligently and hard for that candidate. But come Tuesday, when the results come back, uh, if our candidate doesn't win, uh, we need to support the Democrat. We need to follow the ideals of, of Tip O'Neill, that all politics is local, that the Democratic Party is about hard work and helping others and remembering what the, the ideas and the notions of being a Democrat, supporting our union and labor. You know, they're the cornerstone of what the Democratic Party have always been. And I shared this story in the past, and I'm going to share it again right now. My uh, father's mother, Ann Hunt O'Sullivan, was an Irish immigrant. She came over here from County Mayo, Ballyhonas. La Carroll was the township. And three things my Nana would always say that she was the most proud of. Daily prayer, family, and voting. Voting, voting, voting. Voting is the key to our success right now. And I think if we look at the words of the late, great John Lewis, what Congressman Lewis said not just a civil rights icon, but an American hero. And what the late Congressman said was that nothing can stop the power of a committed and determined people to make a difference in our society. Think about that. Right now, our society is challenged, challenged in many ways, from COVID and the detrimental negative impacts that it's had here locally in Brockton, 280 loss of lives, over 4,500 people have suffered because of COVID. We have suffering emotional and physical and financial. And of course, now we're dealing with long overdue systemic changes and racial justice. It needs to happen now. And Brockton will be an example for other communities in the Commonwealth and in the nation. But today is about listening and learning from the candidates and making sure that the candidates are really articulating what we wanna hear as voters. Because even though we're elected officials, we're voters. And what we're gonna determine and this election is gonna determine state consequences and county consequences and national consequences. And I know that my friend and state rep, our great state rep, Claire Cronin is gonna talk about President-elect Biden. And I say that President-elect Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. But right now we can determine the future of the nation and we need to do that. First thing we need to do, and I echo the sentiments of Phyllis Ellis, we need to go to the polls. We need, I already voted at the Westgate Mall, but we need to make sure that people go to the polls, our family, our friends. I know that in years past, elections past, people would say, 
ah, don't worry about it. My vote doesn't matter. I'll get you in November. No, September determines what we're going to do in November. So I'm going to humbly ask each and every one of you to go to the polls. I'm also going to say that whoever wins, we need to support the winners. And I'll give you two quick examples. Back in 2012, myself and Claire and Jay Stewart and, and, and Mark Lindy were running for an open seat. And we all worked hard and we, we all ran really great, proud campaigns. But when Claire won that night, I got into my car with my wife, Maria, and I drove to her office in Belmont Street to congratulate her. And when I got there, Jay Stoat was already there. That's what Democrats do. We support each other. And then last year, when I was running for mayor against Jimmy Pereira, we ran a hard campaign. And that night when I prevailed, Jimmy came and congratulated me. That's what it's all about. We work hard. We work diligent. But whoever wins, we support the winner. Never feel bad. I've lost two elections. You never feel bad. You learn from your losses. But at the end of the day, the Democrats can control our own destiny. So I'm here today to just say, let's get to the polls. Let's work hard. And as the late, great Brockton Housing Authority, Richard Surge, great Democrat Dick was, he would always say to me, Bob, what you do is you add to your base, you don't subtract. Think about that. Add to the base, don't subtract. That's the essence of being a Democrat working for those that are less fortunate, but working for the ideals of what's gonna make a better future. Not right now, but for the next generation, for my three kids and your kids and your grandchildren. That's what being a Democrat's about. So I'm excited, first of all, to listen to all the speeches today. There's great people running, you know, and I just applaud them for throwing their hat in the ring or running for reelection, whatever it is. It's about controlling the democratic seats and adding to those base, what Mr. Sergi used to say. So again, I just want to, first of all, thank you all for your dedication to the city committee, to the democratic party. We have to remember that just last week was a uh, hundredth years of the 19th amendment, the woman's suffrage movement. And we can have the first woman and woman of color to be the vice president of the United States and Kamala Harris. So let's support Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And remember on this coming Tuesday, Please go to the polls. And again, I congratulate everybody running for office. You're all good Democrats. And whoever wins, whoever loses, we work together because that's what it's all about. Coming together for a unified vision and a better future for our nation, for our city, for our Commonwealth. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, and so now the next, um, the next person who's gonna be speaking here is, um, is State Representative Claire Cronin, and we are just going to, we're just getting her, getting her on right now. Um, we're just getting her on right now. So if you can just bear with me just for one moment, uh, we will have her give the speech in just a second. All right, so um, what we're gonna do is Rep Cronin is gonna be giving her speech in just a little while. Um, and so the next thing that we are, the next thing that we are going to do here is, um, the next thing we are going to do here is uh, uh, the scholarship award is going to be next. So the people that we are going to let on here are going to be Janice and Catherine. Um, they're the folks who are working hard on, uh, on, our, on our scholarship thing. So I'm just going to promote them to panelists. I'm also going to promote Catherine Healy here. And um, oh, let's just start video. All right, great. Great. So Janice, I am going to spotlight you. Here we go spotlight and great so we can get janice you can get started and then hello can everyone hear me hello we can hear you you can go ahead okay good morning um thank you for allowing me to present the scholarship recipient miss Catherine healy uh the scholarship from the paul and jean sullivan um breakfast this morning so before i present it to Ms. Catherine Healy, I just would like to go through her bio, which was presented to me, which was, was quite impressive. And I just wanted to highlight some of the 
um, information from her bio, um, just so that we can all know who this, who this great woman is and inspiring to be. Um, Catherine Healy, she graduated from Broughton High School back in 2019. She's presently attending Babson College and she's majoring in business administration. Um, she is the communications chair for the Chai Omega chapter at the college. And so she's very active. Um, she's politically charged and taking academic courses um, in regards to poverty, justice, and equality. And right now, um, with all the events that have been going on, um, this is a major theme. And so that's why voting is important. Um, she's also volunteered with Cradles the Crayons, and she's also, uh, she volunteered with Make-A-Wish Foundation in which the chapter of Chai Omega raised $14,000. Um, she is um, fortunate enough to have a family that has launched the foundation of learning. But as we all know, with the cost of tuition, um, it's very costly. We all need that boost. We all need that uh, that additional uh, push to move us forward um, and to be academically charged to, to pursue whatever we'd like to do. Um, right now she's concentrating in retail supply chain and operations because she wants to know more about the global economies. Um, and just so academic wise, she was awarded the Dean's List uh, with a GPA of 3.59. And let me tell you, uh, that is not an easy feat as I graduated college many moons ago and I'm telling you, I didn't reach 3.59. So I'm very astounded and very proud of Ms. Catherine Healy. And as the mantra says, the future is female. And I truly believe that Ms. Healy, she has the drive, she has the ambition and she would do so much in her community and especially being a Democrat and, and being from the city of Brockton. And I also would like to add that in her class, in one of her classes, there was like 35 students. And the students basically said, if we were more politically charged, we would do more. Uh, we would be more involved. And Miss Healy actually drove from Wellesley all the way to Brockton to vote before her class. That is outstanding. And this is why I charge our, uh, our, our youth, our young adults, to please go out and to vote. The power is in the vote. So on behalf of the Paul and Jean Sullivan Scholarship, we would like to award this to you. We are proud of you. We know that you're going to do great things, many more things, and reach for the stars. And now I'd like to present and have Ms. Kathleen Healy speak as well. Thank you very much. Um, you know, I, I really appreciate all the kind words. For me, um, you know, politics has always been a part of my background growing up, and I really do think that it is so essential for kids my age to be able to have that respect and understanding for what their vote signifies. And I know that I will be continuously trying to educate my peers and get the people around me to get as involved as I believe I am. And, um, you know, I'm just extremely grateful for this opportunity and I'm really excited because, you know, being a, a sophomore in college town at this point and have gone through the process for a year, um, you know, I really do believe that we leave a lasting impact on the people around us. And I'm excited to continue to use my voice at school and uh, gain leadership positions on campus to kind of uh, let it be known how important it is to be a Democrat and be able to have, have a voice. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations to you. Thank you very much. All right, great. Thank you guys so much. Um, so we have now got um, we have now got uh, Representative Cronin um, back on here. So that's great. So we are just going to bring her up. Um, all right, great. So. Oh, there we go. All right. All right, Representative, we should be able to hear you. Can you, uh, oh. you are, I don't know why you're still muted. No, you should. Can you unmute yourself? No, all right. Um, what the heck is going on? 
Um, so, Rep, if you can unmute yourself, that would be fantastic, but you can't. Oh, there you go. So, Rep, you can go ahead and get started. Hey, good morning. How are you? Can you mute your, um, can you um, hang up that phone that you've got on? And so it looks like your computer, the audio is coming through your computer. Um, so you can just, if you can just hang up that, or do you just mute there the phone? Up. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, you can go ahead. Oh, I, sorry, I've had a little technical difficulties here today. Uh, it is my great pleasure to be here today at the Red and Jean Sullivan breakfast. Uh, I missed the previous young student. I caught the tail end of your speech. Uh, congratulations and keep up the good work. Um, I have been asked to speak today on behalf of Joe Biden. Uh, as many of you know, I have been very involved in the Joe Biden campaign uh, from very, very early on, uh, actually before the vice president launched his um, campaign. I was part of his exploratory group and very engaged from here on out. So uh, very fortunately, we had great support for the vice president um, in Brockton. Uh, we had our Brockton mayor, uh, many of the Brockton state delegation, uh, Representative Cassidy and I both supported uh, Joe Biden, uh, city councilor, Susan Nicastro, uh, who hails from Scranton, uh, Joe Biden and Councilor Nicastro were uh, born in Scranton, Pennsylvania. So they share that common bond, uh, as well as Councilor Rodriguez, Councilor Tina Cardozo uh, in, endorsed him, Councilor Cruz, Councilor Monahan. Uh, I hope I haven't missed anyone. I'm just doing this off the top of my head. If I did jump in, please, uh, because we had a great strong support for the vice president here in Brockton. And that was very early on. As we move forward in this election, this is, I believe, the most critical election in my lifetime. Uh, we are faced with a president who has not addressed the concerns of the citizens of both the Commonwealth but in the United States. We have been faced with a pandemic that has literally brought us to our knees and at the same time, this pandemic has shined a light on structural issues of racism that is, exist within all of our systems, whether it be our criminal justice system, the courts, our, our economic systems, our education systems. And this pandemic, although it has always existed, has really shined a light on that. And we have a president that rather than trying to unite us, uh, we are the United States of America. We have a president who is trying to divide us. We can't let him do that. So I am asking everyone, when you go to the polls in November, please make sure that you do so with the great sense of urgency. Don't stay home. We can't wake up the next morning and have it be 2016 again. And when we woke up on, on that November morning in 2016, I think we all knew it was gonna be bad, but I don't think anyone ever anticipated that it would be just as bad as it truly is right now. We need a president that will bring us together. We need a president that has empathy for the struggles and challenges that working families face every day. We don't need someone that is in a gilded cage that doesn't understand what it's like to either be going paycheck to paycheck or not having a paycheck at all. And the urgency that I feel in this election is it's almost overwhelming. And, and I hope everyone feels that same sense of urgency. Uh, so I know if Red and Jean were here today, uh, this breakfast is in honor of them. I know that they would be here uh, fighting so hard for a Joe Biden ticket. Uh, I also want to remind you, we do have our primary 
ballot uh, primary election on Tuesday, September 1st. Uh, I am on the ballot. I'm running unopposed, uh, which I'm appreciative of. Uh, but I still would hope that you will cast your vote for me in the election as well. Um, and as we move forward, just remember, we are in this together and truly together. And this is our fight. This is our fight to the White House. Don't stay home. Please, everybody get out and bring a friend to the polls. So with that, I will pass the baton back to Greg, I guess it is. Yeah, thank you so much, State Representative. I, uh, I appreciate that. So um, now we're just gonna go back to our chair here, Deb Garland. She's gonna talk about the next part of our, uh, of our, of our event here. Good morning. Uh, do we have me back? Can you yep, hear me? You are back. You are back. Okay, because I can't hear myself, which is weird. But um, I just wanted to say the scholarship was the Paul and Jean Studensky scholarship. Um, and to thank Janice for her words about our winner. Um, she is a fantastic candidate and I know she'll use those the funds in what way she sees fit towards her education. Thank you, Claire Cronin, for your great message from for uh, Joe Biden. Um, please remember everybody to get out and vote September 1st. Um, our next message, we're gonna have a message from U.S. Senator Ed Markey. Yeah, so, so we're going to get started on the speaking program now. So, um, so just a, a heads up to the folks that are in the waiting room right now, waiting for your chance to get up there and talk. Um, you guys are gonna, we're gonna get started here. Uh, everyone's gonna have two minutes to speak. And um, yep, the first message is gonna be from Ed Markey. So let me just get his video up here. Um, unfortunately, Congressman Kennedy and um, Senator Markey um, are very busy. Uh, right now, so they were not able to join us in person, but they are, they are going to be able to, uh, they are, they did send us video, video messages, so we're just going to go grab that. All right. Brockton Democrats, make sure you vote on Tuesday. This is it. It's democracy is on the line. Let's just make sure we get that vote out. Go and get them, Brockton. You're the city of champions. Champions. Brockton. Great. So next, we are going to be, um, next we're gonna be sharing, uh, oh great. Next we're gonna be sharing video from Congressman, um, from, from Congressman Kennedy. Uh, so just hold on one second while we just get that up here for folks. Um, great, all right, here we go with Congressman Kennedy. All right. Good afternoon, Democrats. I hope you guys are having a wonderful breakfast. Obviously, Tuesday is a big day for us and our party. We want to remind everybody to go out there and vote on Tuesday. We'll be back down at Brockton uh, in a couple of hours uh, once again to uh, be there uh, in the ground and love to earn your support on Tuesday. Thanks so much for all you do. See you soon. Great. All right. So now. Now we've got those guys. Um, yep. So now, so now we have those guys. So, so now the next folks up here are going to be um, Congressman Lynch and um, and and uh, Robbie Goldstein, who's who's challenging him. So we're just going to get them up into the into the thing. They're going to be ready in just one minute. So just bear with us. <clears throat> Congressman Lynch, you can get started. Oh, great. Well, thank you. And, and thank you to Deb Garland for, for helping put this together. Uh, congratulations to Catherine Healy. And, uh, you know, like many people on this call, Red and Gene Sullivan were dear friends of mine. Uh, they actually worked with me during redistricting to make sure that all of Brockton was included in just one congressional district. Prior to that, uh, Brockton was split. Uh, Bill Delahunt and I actually shared the city. Uh, Congressman Delahunt and I had an arrangement that since I was brand new, I was a freshman, um, I would do all the work and he would take all the credit. Uh, but fortunately, we were able to unify the city of Brockton into one district. 
and uh, establishing a full-time office here in Brockton allowed me to get to know the uh, people of Brockton very closely and intimately, and it also allowed me to bring in Shana Barnes, who was a, uh, has been a real blessing to me and to the city of Brockton. Over the years, she's become a, a recognized expert in immigration law, and we've been able to help many, many families in Brockton. And after losing my dear, dear friend, Bill Carpenter, it was reassuring and comforting to have uh, Mayor Bob Sullivan come in and uh, continue such a great tradition of strong leadership in Brockton. Uh, we started in January with a $1.5 million federal grant. Uh, I want to thank Senator Markey and, and Senator Warren for helping on that. Uh, that allows us to, to create up to six new businesses or expand six addition, additional uh, our existing businesses uh, in downtown Brockton. We also work with Gillette to provide 20,000 N95 masks and about 50,000 face shields to Brockton Hospital and, and Good Samaritan Hospital in Brockton, as well as the amazing staff down at the, uh, the Brockton Neighborhood Health Center with Sue Joss there, which was extremely important uh, because as you know, we, we had a very high rate of infection among people of color in Brockton and black lives matter. So uh, we've been able to, to help them. Uh, tomorrow we'll also bring a big check from the federal government from the CARES Act to reimburse the Brockton Neighborhood Health Center for $650,000 and also Brockton uh, Housing Authority for $841,000. The CARES Act, which I was a, 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 a co-sponsor of. We also passed the HEROES Act in the house, which includes a trillion dollars for cities like Brockton. And last month, we also passed my Green Buses for Every City Act. Uh, what we're trying to do is get rid of those old diesel buses and replace them with, with zero emission buses. I tell you this because this is how we respond to a crisis in Brockton. We respond together. While President Trump is trying to divide the country, as, as uh, Representative Cronin pointed out, in the midst of this crisis, we in Brockton have pushed that aside. We did what Brocktonians have always done. We've rolled up our sleeves and we've gone to work. When Postmaster DeJoy took the high speed machines out of the Brockton Post Office on Commercial Street, he wasn't counting on me or on the people of Brockton when he did that. And when I lit up the Postmaster General for blocking our right to vote, I was thinking about Brockton. I was thinking about how you would want me to respond. In closing, once again, I offer my prayers and thoughts to the extended family of Sergeant Elder Fernandez from my time with their mom and their aunt and, and his brother uh, down in Texas, down at Fort Hood. I can see they are suffering from a tremendous loss. You know, Brockton has a big heart and we need to show them the love that this city is capable of. We will continue to work together to bring justice. Please remember them in your prayers. As many of you remember, I worked as a union iron worker for about 20 years before I came to Congress. I know what it's like to struggle. I know what it's like to live paycheck to paycheck. And I know what it's like to get back up when you've been knocked down. That's not just my story. That's Brockton's story. It's our story and our perspective. I wish all of the candidates good luck on Tuesday. Please consider me for your vote. If you re you reelect me, I promise I will continue to bring a little bit of Brockton down to Washington D.C. each and every day. God bless the city of Brockton, and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you so much, Congressman. Um, so now uh, the next person up we have is Robbie uh, Goldstein. So uh, Robbie, hang on one second. Let me just. There you go. You are good. You can get started here. Hey, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here and, and giving me the opportunity to address the crowd. Um, we are here to celebrate what it means to be a Democrat, what it means to fight for our shared values and our country. Uh, and this breakfast honors two people who knew the answers, knew their party and knew how to fight. And that's through the democratic process of elections. We are days away from a moment in that fight, the September 1st primary. And as that day approaches, the values of the Democratic Party are clearer than they have ever been. This is a party that wants to address the biggest challenges that we face head on. It's a party that's looking to bold solutions, big answers and fresh ideas. It's a party that sees the beauty in equity and the strength in diversity. And it's a party that is looking for leadership. Leadership from those with the right experience and expertise to guide us through the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Leadership from those who fight every day on the march toward racial justice. Leadership that sees the strength of a democratic party that reflects our values and is united behind our cause. I'm here in the eighth district in Brockton, that leadership is missing in Congress right now. And on Tuesday, we have an opportunity. It is time for the values of this party and of this district to be represented in Washington. Reproductive justice, universal health care, an investment in our environment, true equity for all. That last point is incredibly important, true equity for all. Equity means that we lift up the American worker and make sure that everyone receives equal pay for equal work, no matter their gender, the color of their skin or the language they speak. Equity means that it's safe to walk the streets of Brockton, whether you're white, black, or Latinx. Equity means that no matter who you love, your job is secure, your healthcare is secure, your happiness is secure. And equity means that black lives matter and black trans lives matter. Equity means that our government will hear you, lift you up and protect you from forces that seek to marginalize us, especially when you put on the uniform of this country and are willing to sacrifice so that we can all live free. And this week, we lost a young, brave, and inspiring son of Brockton who was willing to sacrifice so that his family and his community and his country could succeed. All of us are mourning his loss. In that mourning, we are angry. Angry at a government that was witness to nine other soldiers this year who went missing or were found dead at Fort Hood. Angry that Sergeant Elder Fernandez died because of victimization by his own government, neglect by his own government silence from his own government. And on Friday, we gathered in Brockton to remember Sergeant Fernandez, to honor him and to pay tribute to the sacrifice of his family. We left that vigil knowing that to honor him, we must also take action. And we know that this year has been filled with tragedies that have devastated the communities of Massachusetts and of the nation. There are too many names to recite them all, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Tony McDade, Jacob Blake, Vanessa Guillen, Elder Fernandez. These tragedies are not simply a problem of racism in our policing system or a reflection of racism and discrimination in the United States military. They're not just a problem of limited access to health care. These are tragedies that are born out of 400 years of victimization, marginalization, and stigmatization. And they're tragedies that can only be prevented by a government taking action, united in its mission to root out stigma, racism, bias, and hate. Those actions require leadership, they require hard work. They require work that each of us needs to do from our own hearts, including with our votes. As I said, on Tuesday, we have an opportunity in our actions at the ballot box. We can live up to the ideals and the spirit of today's breakfast. We can fight for the values that are bedrock to our party. We can fight for the leadership our party needs to guide us through uncertain times. And we can fight to make sure that true equity exists for everyone. As your Congressman, I will be your partner in this fight. Together, we'll make sure that healthcare is a human right for everyone, building our way to a single payer rather than standing opposed to healthcare expansion. We will make sure that a woman's right to choose is the law of the land and our position on reproductive justice fits neatly on a bumper sticker. We are pro-choice. We will urgently address the climate crisis and not leave it to the political whims of the next 40 to 50 years. We'll get guns off our streets, bring resources to our public education system, will open our arms to those who come to this country seeking asylum and opportunity and not turn them away at the door. We will work together every day, not just briefly every two years and then run up to an election. I'm running to fight for the values we share as Democrats and I'm running to fight for what we all know is right. I'm asking you to join me in that fight and for your vote in the Democratic primary on Tuesday. Thank you for having me this morning. Enjoy the rest of your morning. And I look forward to speaking to all of you again very soon. Great, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, Robbie. Um, and we are now going to go over to, um, we're now going to do, go to a message from uh, auditor, uh, auditor Suzanne Bump, um, who wasn't able to join us today, but um, you know, she's a, she always comes to these, always comes to these breakfasts. So she wanted to send in a message. So here she, here she is. Good morning, Rockton area Democrats. I am Suzanne Bump, your state auditor, and I am delighted to be able to join you at the 19th annual Sullivan Memorial Breakfast. On Tuesday, we will conclude 2020's primary voting process, which for the first time utilized mail-in ballots on a wide scale. Early sign 
signs indicate that this has been widely embraced by Massachusetts Democratic voters, and it is my fervent hope that it will serve as a powerful example of how the mail-in voting process can be done safely, securely, and without fraud. Because this year, the Republicans have been doing their best to discourage mail-in voting by citing unfounded threats and by sabotaging the United States Postal Service. That means that we Democrats have to work even harder than ever on our get out the vote efforts, both here in Massachusetts and across the country. And one of the benefits of the new technologies available to us is that we no longer have to leave our homes uh, in order to help get out the vote in swing states. From our kitchen tables and from our back porches, we can dial in across the country and help educate voters as to the safety of the voting mail-in voting process, as well as the desirability of ousting our racist, bigoted, know-nothing president and replacing them him with Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. We need to turn a new page in American history. We can do so much better, and we were doing better. We were on an upward trajectory until Donald Trump and Mike Pence occupied the White House. It's time to return to the values that are at the bedrock of our democracy, return to our fight for ever expanded criminal justice, environmental justice, economic justice, and equal opportunity. We can do that now in swing states, which really matter from the comfort of our own homes. I urge you to plug in to the Biden-Harris campaign and make a difference. In the words of one of my favorite songs from the 70s, uh, song by, written by Graham Nash and made popular by uh, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, we can change the world. It's dying to get better. Thank you so much for your continued dedication to our party and our principles. All right, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much to the auditor. And uh, so next up here, we are going to be hearing from um, from State Senator Michael uh, Brady, and then also from uh, Councillor um, Councillor Rodriguez. So let's just hang on one second while we get them set up here. And they're gonna. All right, Senator Brady, if you guys could just turn on your video here, that would be fantastic. Uh, we're getting. Uh, we're getting. Saying we can't start our video, Greg. Greg, are you there? Yep, we're here. All right, so we, can't, um, we cannot start the video. It's not coming on. I'm. I sent you guys a couple of ask ask to start the video. No. Yeah, it says fail to start camera. Um, that sounds like a technical problem at at your end. Um. Can we, can, can you guys keep working on that? And then I can just have, I'll have, um, Councilor Rodriguez is also on here, so I can have him go. Okay, work, go right ahead. Work on that, all right, great. So Mo, I just need you to, Councilor, I just need you to unmute your phone here so we can get started. All right, uh, hang on one second, let me spotlight you. All right, you can get started. Well, good morning, uh, Democrats from Brockton. Good morning to all that are watching us at this time through this uh, means. Uh, what a different year 2020 has been. Uh, this is the 19th anniversary of this great breakfast that we hold here in the city of Brockton. Uh, but this year, things are a little different because of the COVID-19 and the situation that we're facing here in our country. Uh, my name is Moses Rodriguez, and I've been a, uh, 
a city council for the last uh, four terms. Uh, and I have served as a mayor here in the city of Brockton. And I am now running for the state uh, senator uh, seat that represents the city of Brockton and the, the other communities in this Senate district. Uh, the reason why I chose to run is because frankly, I am tired of the inactions of the current occupier of the seat uh, that is, uh, has been elected now several times to represent this district. Uh, the other day, the Senator said that, um, uh, that he has brought millions and millions of dollars worth of funding to the city of Brockton. And what our uh, listeners, uh, people who are watching us should know is that those funds that actually came to the city of Brockton are funds that are part of the state's uh, budgets and they're funds that are basically uh, formulated in the sense to provide funding to the city of Brockton. Nothing new, nothing special, just regular funding. Uh, the Senator also said that I, uh, I didn't ask for, uh, for his help in, in attaining funding. Uh, what is clear is that I think he's confusing a couple things. He's confusing the fact that uh, a Senator has to be asked to be proactive in providing funds uh, to a community that he represents. When you look at it, uh, Claire Cronin did not ask the community whether or not uh, we wanted monies for parks and, uh, and, and facilities here in the city of Brockton. Jerry Cassidy did not ask me whether or not I wanted $75,000 for a domestic violence program run through the Cape Verdean Association. Uh, Michelle Dubois did not ask me whether or not I wanted $30,000 to provide summer and after school programs to inner city youth uh, here in the city of Brockton. Uh, what the Senator didn't do is provide the city with funding as other senators have done for their region. And that is what has led us to basically come out and say, we're not getting the bang for our buck in terms of this Senate seat. The Senator the other day claimed that he has uh, provided uh, help to thousands and thousands of people who have been afflicted by the COVID-19 epidemic or pandemic here in the city of Brockton. I find that interesting where the Senator uh, whose office does not have a single person who speaks a language from this community, not a Cape Verdean, not a Haitian, not a Hispanic, how can he be providing services to one of the more diverse communities in Massachusetts when not a single person in his office looks or sounds like I do. This is the reason why I'm seeking this seat. I'm seeking this seat because we are tired of hearing how, oh, you know, your senator is a nice guy, but that's about it. I hear from friends, mutual friends on both sides that, you know, uh, Mike Brady is a nice guy, but you know what? Uh, we're not voting for him because we're tired of the nice guy just showing up to the meetings for the sake of showing up to meetings so that he can claim that he's showing up to the meetings. One of the reasons why sometimes you see him and you don't see the rest of us, you know what, I'm not a state senator. I'm a city, a part-time city councilor who works for a living here in the city of Brockton. So therefore, if there's a meeting at 11 o'clock, I'm at my full-time job of providing for my family so I cannot be at those meetings. So. The claim to fame that we should vote for this guy again because he shows up at the meetings is a definition of insanity, doing the same exact thing, hoping for different results. That's the reason why I come to you, my fellow Democrats in this community, and ask you that it's time for us to join the rest of the country in the 21st century and change the old, change the insanity that has afflicted us in this community for so long. Uh, senator Tommy Kennedy was the last senator that we had in the city of, uh, and representing this region that actually put the city, uh, in the city in this region first and provided the needed resources that we needed to. What we currently have, to be honest with you, it's an embarrassment and it's time for us to do something about this. That's why I've got the support of thousands of people in this community, elected officials, as I said the other day, I didn't seek out 
endorsements because the only endorsement that I'm interested in getting is the endorsements of the voter of this Senate district. I have, I'm counting on you to join me so we can change and make a revolution in terms of funding from the Senate side of things. Uh, our state reps have done a great job. What's lacking is the action of the Senate seats. And for this, I come to you and I ask you for your support on Tuesday. God bless you, stay safe, and let's go and continue to make the changes that we need to make to make our city and state and district even better. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. Great, thank you very much, Councillor. I'm gonna stop your video here. All right, I think we have solved all of our problems here for Congress for Senator Brady. We are gonna spotlight the video and go ahead. Go ahead, State Senator. Thank you very much. And I wanna thank everybody watching and listening today. I know you had some technical difficulties, but uh, this is the Paul and Jean Sullivan Democratic breakfast. I wanna congratulate. This is a 19th annual breakfast and Paul and Jean Sullivan were the true epitome of what Democrats were. Paul was like an uncle to me, Jean was like an aunt. They got me involved many years ago on the Democratic City Committee, the Plymouth County Democratic League and the Democratic State Committee. And also the scholarship. I wanna congratulate Ms. Healy for the Paul and Jean Stadinsky Scholarship. It's well-deserved. And also our prayers go out to Sergeant Elda Fernandez. We've seen too many tragedies. I know Congressman Lynch has been down at Fort Hood in Texas. He's following up, they're doing a thorough investigation and hopefully they'll come to a conclusion on this because one death is too many and especially over 10, it's, it's, it's definitely way too many. Uh, as far as my work ethic, everybody knows me in Brockton. They know I work 24 seven. Brady Works has been my theme ever since I was on the school committee, city council, state house of representatives and the state senate. And I continue to work 24 seven. And with all due respect to my opponent, it isn't just about showing up at meetings, it's doing the work. And when we pass the Student Opportunity Act, which is the highest increase of funding for our public schools in the Commonwealth, never mind just the city of Brockton, it took many, many years of work. And I mentioned in a uh, meeting we had that there were city councils at the meetings, there were school committee members, the superintendent schools, and we brought the chairperson of the House of Representatives in the Senate to Brockton. We visited the high school in the Kennedy School. That's how important this was to see what goes on firsthand. And, you know, the other elected officials have been there. The other elected officials have come into Boston to meet with us to talk about what the needs, because we have to work together. So we passed the highest increase of funding with the Student Opportunity Act. And the city of Brockton alone is gonna get over $186 million. Over $200 million is going to the rest of the district, including Brockton. And that's been a lot of work. I've been a big supporter of the environment. I was there to fight against a fossil fuel power plant many years ago, and I've been recognized in the past with the Environmental League of Massachusetts, not because I asked for their endorsement, because of the work I've done. We changed a brownfield site into a brightfield site, an old gas company site that produces energy, clean renewable energy solar panels for the city of Brockton. We passed many other pieces of legislation. Breakfast after the bell. We find a lot of families that are suffering out there. They, they don't have enough food at home. So we passed legislation working together to feed our young children in school so they can get prepared for the day. We passed maternity health legislation. I filed personally over 50 bills. Now filing a bill is one thing, but you gotta get it done. I have co-sponsored bills because we work together with our colleagues in the state Senate and in the House of Representatives to get things done. And I will continue to do that. We also passed legislation for child marriage to end children having a marriage before the age of 18 without parental consent, because we see that too many young children are taken advantage out there. We also passed NICI laws to help individuals with intellectual and development disabilities from caregivers who have substantiated history of abuse. I also sponsored the Commission on the Status of Women and Girls. And I also serve, and I'm a proud member of serving on the NAACP. And I've been a member from way back when I was on the school committee, and I'm also proud to serve on a prostate cancer awareness group with Representative Cassidy and Representative Claire Cronin. We work to get additional funding to address that with an AdmiCare tech group to help address this. Prostate cancer is higher in the loves of black males than any other group. And we helped address that and we helped pass legislation on that. And I will continue to do so. 
There's so many other things we have to continue to do and we have to work together. I'm not into cutting down my fellow colleagues and putting people down. I'm here to lift people up. And as Michelle Obama said, when they hit low, we go high, if I can quote her words. And I continue to work my fellow colleagues and legislators and the people, which is the most important of the Commonwealth in the city of Brockton and also the towns that go from go from Houston all the way to Hanover down to Plimpton. I've gotten funding for chronic bacteria that Brockton gets their water from in the Mont Ponce of Ponds that feeds Silver Lake. I've helped get funding for our council on aging facilities, not just in Brockton, but in other towns. And I will continue to work and fight for our district as I always have. Most of the people here today know me, they know my work ethic and they know all the work I've done and I will continue to do so. And I am proud and honored to be our state Senator and I hope to get your vote and support continuing to move forward to continue the work I've always done to continue to work for the city of Brockton and the surrounding towns in our second Plymouth in Bristol Senate District. So again, thank you everybody today. I know there's other candidates on the line. And the bottom line about the Democratic Party is we have to be unified and work together. And we have to work together from the top down to the bottom. We have to elect a new Democratic president, which I am wholly supportive of Joe Biden and all the other candidates that are running for election. We have to be unified at the end of this primary to work together to make sure we elect Democrats from the president's office to Congress, to the US Senate, down to the local races in the state Senate and the House of Representatives in the local county seat. So again, thank you for all your support. I thank everybody online today. And I know it's a busy day out there. There's other events to attend to. So I wish you all well, be safe, and we will continue to work and also, one last thing, we have worked to get PPE equipment into the district. It didn't start early and it was a very difficult fight because again, our president diverted resources back to Washington. And I've worked with our US Senate delegation, our congressional delegation. I've donated PPE equipment to the Brewster Ambulance, to our homeless people at the Main Spring Shelter. And we're continuing to get the resources here. So I am here to ask for your vote again my name is Mike Brady. I am your state senator. I look forward to continuing to work for you for the next two years. Thank you very much. Great, thank you so much, Senator. Um, and next up here, we have uh, State Representative Michelle Dubois. So, um, State Rep, you just need to unmute yourself. There you go, you are all set, go ahead. Hi, everybody. In the spirit of um, COVID-19 um, Zoom um, conferencing, I am here right before hitting the streets and distributing literature about my democratic values here in um, the 10th Plymouth District that I am so honored to represent you um, as your state representative. I have been your state representative for six years. I've been reelected um, three times and I am asking for your vote on September first for my fourth term in office. Prior to that, I was a city councilor uh, for five terms for Ward 6. Um, that was 10 years. All that time, I had a full-time job. My career um, outside of community service is in um, nonprofit administration and fundraising. So um, I'm a 48 year old person. I know I look young. I hold a, a college degree from Mass College of Liberal Arts. Um, my career in nonprofit fundraising and administration, it went from uh, Pine Street Inn, New England Shelter for Homeless Veterans, St. Francis House, um, Coalition for Social, um, I'm, I'm sorry, South Coastal Counties Legal Services, and you can see from where I have worked and where I've chosen to build a career, I have been focused on building communities and helping people. I grew up in a very poor family, but hardworking family. My mom and dad worked two or three jobs my whole life. My mom worked till she was 70 as a CNA. So I understand what it's like to live in a family that struggles and that is Brockton. And that's why I have fought to get the $2 billion that Senator um, Brady mentioned around uh, the Student Opportunity Act. Uh, one of my bills was brought into the Student Opportunity Act around transient students and how people um, that are low income move a lot and how that affects budgets in urban communities. I've worked very hard to help people that struggle so we can get help. I'd like to say this, corporations, um, out of town developers, nasty power plants, 
people that want to bring garbage from Newton and Wellesley and truck it into Brockton and put it on a train and ship it out to another poor community. Um, what, what it runs the gambit, tire burning facilities, they all have lawyers, they all have lobbyists, they all have paid employees to fight for them. Us in, us in Brockton, you know, we have ourselves and we have our elected officials. And so as your elected official, that is my priority, is to make sure that we get our, we are respected. That's why I fight for environmental justice, that we get the funding we deserve. That's why I fight for chapter 90 money, road and bridge money. Um, I was able to deliver $50 billion worth of projects and a bonding um, during the time, all road infrastructure. If you're seeing that rotary up on North Quincy Street and Boundary, that started when I was a city council it was on the transportation um, uh, payment bill for the state when I became a state representative. These are long-term projects that move our community forward. And I just like to say that in my time as in public service as your city councilor, and now you're, I'm so honored to be your state representative and I ask you for your vote for re-election, this district has become a real wonderful place to live. People are moving from Boston, they're moving to our side of town. This, this district represents this, I call it this side of the railroad tracks. It's Ward 4, 5, and 6, part of 4, part of 5, most of 5, all of 6. And this is a desirable place for people to live. And it's because I have fought off the terrible, disgusting projects in community with all of you. I am the, I have to tell you, epitome of a team player. I love working in a team. In college, I played college, I played um, team um, doubles tennis. I like, I like having uh, partners and all of you have been wonderful partners to me. We've been able to make our community a better place to live. That's what I want to fight for up at the state house. In July, we passed an environmental justice bill that I've been fighting for these last three terms with all of you into mass general law. We just have to wait for the governor to come out of conference committee and the governor to sign it. These are the tangible, true things that I've been working on. We have four playgrounds in our district that are now refurbished due to budget earmarks that I was able to secure. It's not often a city, a state representative can say, this is something that I delivered because like everyone before has spoken, it's a team, team effort to be a state representative or a state legislator. But in those aspects, the, the four parks, those aspects that I, two of them came directly through budget earmarks, which is um, the East Junior High Playground and a part of the McKinley Park. We seeded it with $170,000 with the budget earmarks that redid the basketball court and part of the play system that the Patriots then came and donated and put in. These types of community improvements, when you're really focused on the community, they attract partners. And so um, I, I ask you to partner with me to work another two years for this district and to make it even a better place to live, to get more funding for our roads and our infrastructure and our school system, protect our environment, fight for justice, Black Lives Matter. This, is a, this community is a, a very diverse and beautiful place to live. Um, I commit that if I'm reelected during that term, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight to, to make the 10th Plymouth District um, to, to have it be acknowledged as a minority majority community in the redistricting. Um, I'm going to fight to make sure that people of color feel as though that they are just, are treat, that, that people that are white and black are treated the same in a dignified, respectful, um, positive manner, and that everybody gets to the point that we all understand that to be a fact, and then we very can much. just live in a better world. So I ask for your vote on September 1. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, so now we are going to get uh, Mr. Lally here. Hang on just one second. I'm going to spotlight your video. There you go. You are good to go, Jack. All right, thank you. Hey, everyone. You know, my name's Jack Lally. I'm the Ward 6 counselor. Um, you know, I, I was elected when I, uh, I was elected when I turned 18. Um, you know, I, I and I've, I've been the counselor since then. Uh, you know, I've really appreciated the support uh, that I've that I've gotten over this time, um, especially now on this on this new endeavor for uh, for state representative. Uh, you know, people people want change. They want something different. They want you know real tangible results, and, and we're not we're not getting it. You know, you can say whatever you like. You can throw whatever buzzwords out that you want, 
at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's about, it's about just going in there and getting it done. It's not, it's not about the show. It's not about, you know, putting, you know, putting on a display. It's about, you know, just quietly going in and, and getting done what has to be done. Um, you know, we're, we're really working to do what, what we need to do, um, you know, infrastructure, especially, you know, the, the big things that I've been talking about are communication, infrastructure, public safety, uh, and, you know, fiscal responsibility, education. Uh, infrastructure was not a part of the conversation at the start of this campaign. You know, I've worked very hard to continue to beat that drum because, you know, the 10th Plymouth District, the east side of Brockton especially, has without a doubt, the worst roads in the city of Brockton. Our pipes are worse, our water pressure is worse, and, and the roads above are awful. So, you know, we've taken, you know, proactive action as, as, a, as a city to, uh, to adjust that. And, and we've had to take that action because councils before uh, have, have punted on the decision, have left it up for someone else to, to better benefit their own reelection. Um, you know, we've, we've had to, we've had to rely on that because, you know, we, we need a change in the chapter 90 formula, the, how we get our road money. We need, we need more. Um, really it's about efficiency. It's about communication and efficiency. Uh, you know, I, am very proud of my record when it comes to constituent communication, responding to people, helping them out. Um, it's, it's really, it's really the the main part of the job even if there's nothing the representative or the counselor can do the fact that you can call someone you can get a hold of someone and, and they hear you and they understand you and that's essential uh and and you know i i don't screen those calls i don't ask you know if you know what what background you are where you're from or you know if, if you, even if you live in the ward if it's if it's something specific i'll i'll try and you know find them the counselor but uh really it's it's the communication communication infrastructure public safety education you know we 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 need we need something up there and right now we're not getting it you know my my opponent like like they said has been there for six years um and and, and nothing's nothing's come through the state house you know nothing she's filed has reached the speaker it's it's got to change that's not how we get results and, uh, and, and I think it was Deb Garland earlier said, you know, it's, it's the youth. You gotta, you gotta put the youth in there at some point. You gotta let them take a swing at things. Uh, you know, my generation uh, is, is very, very, uh, um, they're, they're, they're loud, they're ready. They're ready to go. Uh, they're making themselves heard in a way that I feel other generations have not and have not had the opportunity to do. And I think that's going to really change the game. I think it's going to change the game in a positive way. And so really, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm looking to, to be a part of that. I'm looking for your support. And I'm looking to, to bring home the bacon when it comes to this district. You know, I make three promises. If I miss your call, I call you back. I will work as hard as I can. And unless I can pull it out of my pocket and give it to you right now, I'm not going to promise it. That's not what we, you know, that's, that's not our responsibility, you know, to, to make grand promises, to promise you the moon and, and never return. And I'm not going to throw out any buzzwords or anything like that, but I'm offering stability. What I have done in the past is what I'm going to do in the future, you know, just represent the people of the ward, the people of the district, the people who have to, you know, the people who have to go in and go out every single day, worried about what comes next. Um, you know, I, I worked at when I when I ran for counselor the first time, I was working about 80 hours a week. I worked uh, full time at a plumbing supply company and, and part time at Stop and Shop in Delhi. Uh, it, and it was a lot, but I had to prepare for college. You know, it's 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 expensive undertaking. It's 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 a huge problem. And it's only going to get bigger as more and more people go through this this, this crooked system that is charging them an arm and a leg for an education that you know, isn't worth the paper the degree is printed on. It's got to change. We need to invest more in, you know, responsible education and we need to invest more in our, uh, our trade schools. I'm three credits away from, uh, from my degree. I go back in the fall uh, and then I will be fully certified to uh, engage in political science. So once again, I hope to have everyone's support 
on uh, September 1st. If anyone has any questions, they can feel free to reach out to me uh, on my website. There's a bunch of communication information. It's jacklally.org. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Jack. Um, great. So the next uh, the next thing that we've got up here, hang on one second, is uh, we're going to be showing a video from uh, Greg Hanley. Greg, unfortunately, is not able to not able to join us today. He's, um, his uncle passed away of COVID a little while ago, and his family's battling it. So we're gonna um, we're going to uh, hang on a second. All right, I'm ready to get started. Good morning, everyone. It's your old pal, Plymouth County Commissioner Greg Hanley. It's an honor to be with you virtually. I am, and would really like to be there myself today. Uh, I want to thank the city committee for giving me this opportunity to uh, give you warm wishes on a great day. Greg Sullivan and his wife, Jean, were great Democrats. And if you think back when it wasn't so easy to be a Democrat in the city of Brockton, the city of champions, we had two champions in red and Gene Sullivan. Uh, today, we remember them. Um, I'm due to COVID, I'm not too happy that I can't be there and uh, have breakfast is my favorite thing to do and press the flesh with everyone. Uh, but I wanna wish everyone uh, a great day. It's great to be a Democrat. Uh, Paul Stadinsky and his wife, Jean, Paul Sr., uh, the, there's a scholarship named in their honor recognizing outstanding Brockton students, again, in the name of being a Democrat. Uh, it's been interesting these last 10 years in the city on how things have changed. And now, as we remember folks who are no longer with us, I myself feel as if the next generation is ready uh, to come up behind us. So I wanna thank all of the people who have worked so hard this year on the city committee to make it lively and uh, invigorating. Uh, it's been great election season for us. Uh, tomorrow, I am delivering the first of, I hope, to at least be four checks of CARES Act money for the city of Brockton. The first check is for a million dollars. And tomorrow at noon, we'll be presenting to the mayor that money on behalf of Plymouth County and the federal government for COVID-related expenses not anticipated in the budget. The next uh, approval was for $12 million that the city council just approved for the school system in distance learning. So I'm working on as your county commissioner. This Tuesday, September 1st is election day. I would appreciate one of your votes so I can continue the hard work of both Paul and Gene Stadinsky and Paul and Gene Sullivan. Happy breakfast, everyone. Good morning, everyone. All right. So now we're going to have Marshfield Selectman Michael Brady join us here and we're just going to get him up. All right. And Michael, if you want to unmute yourself, you are up. Go ahead. Thank you. I want to thank the BDCC uh, for allowing me to um, or inviting me to the breakfast and also allowing me a few minutes to speak about my campaign. My name is Michael Bradley. I'm running for Plymouth County Commissioner. I'm currently my second term as chairman of the Marshfield Board of Selectmen, and I'm also chair of the Plymouth County Advisory Board, which is the legislative body that oversees county government. Prior to my time in local government, I was an officer and a lieutenant with the Plymouth County Sheriff's Department, a prosecutor with the Norfolk County District Attorney's Office, uh, executive director of a statewide crime task force initiated by the governor, and I own a small law practice on the South Shore. I'm very proud of the work we've done over the last six years, working on important community issues like the battle against opiate addiction, working on our critical infrastructure and public safety, working on union issues, healthcare, veteran services. I'm very proud of a public-private uh, partnership I created in Marshfield with a company called Neighbor Works. They're also doing a project in Brockton. Uh, that company came in, uh, took an old historic building, uh, agreed to restore it to its historic nature, but also to make it a home for homeless veterans. Uh, veteran homelessness is an unfortunate reality in this country, and we're doing our, our part to make a dent in it. Uh, we also spent a lot of time on the budget, as you might imagine. Uh, because of the pandemic, we had to rapidly adapt uh, to the loss of revenue. We had to cut $1.9 million out of a $103 million budget, and I'm happy to say that we, we did that without resorting to layoffs. I plan to bring a measured, experienced approach to county government, one that highlights what the county does for all of us, which is essentially regional services. The county has programs and services 
that every member community can participate in at little or no cost because you're already paying. Some of these programs are our, our wonderful 4-H program, uh, a municipal bulk purchasing program where you can purchase fuel oil equipment through the county at discounted rates. And we also have everything from parking ticket collection, a staff grant writer, a staff entomologist, and a dredging program that can and should be expanded. Uh, the county does a lot, and most recently, uh, it has um, engaged in the reimbursement of COVID-related expenses. Um, I'm happy to say it was part of that process. Uh, Marshfield got $1.25 million in, in their first wave. And I can tell you that money is, is literally saving us as we did not have to resort to a second wave of cuts, which would have likely resulted in layoffs. Uh, I'm also happy to report that um, Brockton will be receiving tomorrow their first phase of COVID reimbursement money. And I know that there's $12 million to $16 million that is earmarked for Brockton. I hope you get every cent of that money as I know you need it. Uh, I'm working with Mayor Sullivan as I worked with him in the past as uh, I was chair, excuse me, I am chair of the advisory board and he was the vice chair. We lost him uh, when he became your great mayor. So I'm happy to um, continue working with Mayor Sullivan and all of our, our regional elected officials to make sure that you get all of the money you need for your COVID related expenses. I'm also happy to report um, that I have the endorsement of, of my friend, Mayor Bob Sullivan. More importantly, I'm hoping to have your support on September 1st. And I really appreciate the time this morning. Great, thank you so much, um, uh, Selectman Bradley. Um, I am going to bring up Vice Chair of the Hingham School Committee, uh, Mr. Carlos De Silva. Carlos, you are off mute, you are good to go. Good morning, fellow Democrats. My name is Carlos De Silva. I was born in a small city of the Brazilian countryside, one of nine children of public servants. At 18, I came to the West alone and without knowing the language. Before long, I was lucky enough to meet my, wife, my future wife, Rita, who was born and raised in Quincy. We married and adopted two beautiful babies from Brazil. Family is everything to me. One of my passions is to be involved with the community, and I would be honored to serve the citizens of Plymouth County as your next commissioner. We name our children after family members. My oldest son, we named him Andre, who was named after my father-in-law, a 92-year-old uh, Korean War uh, condecorated with two purple hats. My youngest son, Edson, we named him after my, uh, my brother, who was 21, uh, 20, uh, 21 years old on the police force and killed on the line of duty. Black lives matter. Immigrants' lives matter. I'm here as an immigrant and a person of color to tell you that I'm proud to be an elected official on the town of Hingham. I am the vice chair of the Hingham School Committee. I was elected in 2016 and re-elected in 2019 and chosen by my peers as the vice chair, becoming the first Brazilian American to be elected to office in the United States of America. I am proud of my private and public record. Uh, I have uh, three areas that I would like to improve uh, as a commissioner. Uh, they are one, fiscal accountability. We need to have discipline guideline to inconsistent independent audits. Uh, so we know that the funds are spent efficiently. Two, transparency. We need to make sure that the meetings are duly publicized, videotaped and broadcast in the 27 municipalities. We need to, uh, number three, uh, youth engagement. We need to bring interns so we can partner with the businesses, the chambers, the local universities, uh, and have this internship program where our youth can help write grants and bring additional services to the 27 municipalities equally. I am here to respectfully ask for your support. Uh, again, I have done my part. I have been in Brockton many, many times. I respectfully ask for your vote on September 1st. Again, like Rocky Marciano, I am an outsider, the underdog, and counting on grassroots. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Great, thank you so much, Carlos. Um, and now we are going to have uh, Jack Reardon up. Jack, you are on, you are unmuted. You wanna just unmute yourself and we should be good to go. There you go. Good morning, thank you very much. And I wanna thank the Brockton Democratic City Committee for hosting this uh, event this morning. I'm campaigning for Plymouth County Commissioner and I'm campaigning for a better county government and a better tomorrow. 
I ask you when you go to the polls on September 1st to consider a person's policy, positions, and their character. I have three proposals for a better tomorrow, a better county government. Number one, transparency. The Plymouth County Commissioners, the Plymouth County Advisory Board do not audio and video record their meetings. Every other entity from the city council in Brockton to all the towns video and audio record their meetings. Transparency and good government demands they should audio and video record their meetings so the public has a right to know what goes on in those meetings. Number two, ethics. When I served as a county commissioner before, I led a bipartisan effort to adopt the code of ethics. What is it? It's very simple. People who serve as elected officials for county government should not accept political contributions from people who do business with the county. That is just a basic principle of good government. Number three, when the county is sued, there should not be a secret settlement or a non-disclosure agreement. We've read a lot about this in the press and the state is dealing with these issues at this time. The same should apply for the county government. If the county pays money in a settlement due to their malfeasance or wrongdoing, the people like in the city of Brockton who pay tax dollars to support the county government, they have a right to know what happens with their tax dollars. When you go to the polls on September 1st, I'd ask you to not only vote for me because I grew up in Brockton, I graduated from Brockton High School, I work in Brockton every day. I grew up in the north side of Brockton and Battle Streets area. When I came back to Brockton after graduating from the University of Massachusetts at Amherst and then receiving my Juris Doctor degree in law, I became an assistant district attorney in the city of Brockton. And some of my friends and myself and many other Brocktonians realized we had a major city which did not have a Boys and Girls Club. I was one of the first presidents of the Brockton Boys and Girls Club and one of the original incorporators of the Brockton Boys Club in Brockton. The present building where the Brockton Boys Club sits, the old armory, when I was the president of the Brockton Boys and, Club, Boys and Girls Club, we were able to acquire that building for the children of the city of Brockton. Don't vote for me because only because I was president of the Brockton Boys and Girls Club. Don't vote for me only because I used to be president of the Pilgrim Advocates, which is a legal defense entity which provides legal defenses to people that are indigent and poor. Don't vote for me only because I was the founder of the Mochila Project in Brockton, which brought thousands of coats and backpacks to children living below the poverty level. Don't vote for me because in 2000, only because in 2017, I received the Massachusetts Bar Association Community Service Award. Don't vote for me because I'm a former Lieutenant Commander of the United States Navy Reserve. Don't vote for me only because I grew up in the city of Brockton. But all these factors together equal character. And you vote for somebody, and one of the predominant reasons you vote for somebody is because of giving back to the community and character. You can visit me at jackraven.com. I would ask you to cast one of your votes for me, the Brocktonian, on September 1st, 2020. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jack. Um, and now we are going to go over to our chair, Deb Garland, and she is going to close us out. Good morning, I'm back. Finally got the technical part straightened out, I think. In closing today, I'd like to thank the executive board of the Brockton Democratic City Committee, uh, the first chair being Jimmy Pereira, uh, Vice Chair Joan Madden, Treasurer Deb Mullen, Secretary Greg Maynard, and our ward, uh, ward chairs, Ward 1 Donna Jones, Ward 2 Bill Hill, Ward 3 Steve Thomasy, Ward 4 Attorney Susan Nicastro, and City Councilor, Ward 5, Kerry Richards, Ward 6, John Drazinskis, Ward 7, Patrick Quinn. For without these, their commitment to our democratic principles, they would be, uh, we would be lost without them. Our city committee would not move forward. Thank you all, and please get out and vote on September 1st. One more thing is the funds raised today go directly to our scholarship. So uh, we do have an Act Blue account set up. And um, if you can chip in anything, 
it's going directly, hopefully we'll be able to do two scholarships next year. Um, I'd like to say thank you and get out and vote on September 1st. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. And uh, that is it. We are ending the event. Thanks so much for everyone. Thank you.